All right, well, this machine I'm calling my button cell exciter. And uh, what I did here was I took one of these little alkaline 1.5 volt watch batteries and I wired it right into the secondary winding tube on this uh, Slayer exciter. And it's inside that tube. And these are the secondary windings, the white uh, wires, the primary windings. And this is a ferrite core that I slide back and forth to adjust the, the uh, frequency on it. And uh, it works. Uh, it doesn't run very long. This thing draws way too much energy. But uh, I thought this was interesting, so I thought I would share it with people. Now, what I've got set up here is I've got a paralleled 3-volt AA battery source here to help this little guy out. Now the alkaline batteries are somewhat rechargeable. Uh, if you zap too much amperage at this, they pop like a firecracker. Uh, I haven't hurt myself with it, but I've popped a couple of them by shoving too much in energy into it. But I wanted to show how this will also go out over one wire. This is a one wire feed and it'll run this uh, pulse motor. And uh, this was something else that's kind of fun with these exciters, is this one wire feed. And uh, if you don't understand how that works, um, look up uh, Averminkel plug. And it's a couple of diodes, one going one way, one going the other way, that uh, take the high frequency uh, energy coming off that one wire and basically split it up. And some people argue that it's a capacitive link back to the negative on the primary driver that's not accurate. And uh, if you've studied Dr. Stifler's work, uh, he explains how this Averminkel plug works. Uh, it's real interesting. So anyway, let me fire this up. I'll show you how it goes. Let me hook up my, uh, my booster battery here. Turn this on. Okay, there's the primary exciter going. And there goes the little pulse motor being driven off of the one wire that's right here. And this has all the usual exciter effects. You can see the field as I get closer to this. If I touch something, it comes on super bright. If I touch something over here, it goes on super bright. And you can see the field around the battery, the field around the coil here, and of course the field over here. Now I'm going to disconnect the, the booster battery now. That's disconnected. And there's the exciter running. The neon's not lit up, but the rest of it's going. And that's running on that little button cell that's buried inside that coil. And there's the uh, pulse motor going. And here's my exciter effect over here. I still have it off of the, the battery leads. And this is, this is disconnected. Oops. So anyway, that's what I wanted to show today was how you could actually uh, bury a little button cell inside the secondary coil of an exciter and get it to work um, and uh, exhibit all the effects of a normal uh, exciter. Uh, I'm not seeing any recharging effect on this at all. Uh, you would be just as good having this battery sit outside here somewhere. But I thought it was interesting that uh, you could put it inside and it would run. So I, I did this video. And that's the button cell exciter. Thanks for watching.